Hello and welcome to ArcoCast, the best place to chill with your friends and get your gaming goodness each and every Monday once again in 2024. My name's Dylan Blight and joining me on the couch for the first episode, official first episode of the year, Kira Marchant. It's me. Hi. Punctual and here and present as ever, dual wielding whatever is built for me. It's really good because I um, we were going to have Ash on this week, but then because um, Xbox did their conference, we just decided to start the year on a more positive note and like not Look, invite him on. We gave him the timeout, you know. We yeah, gave him yeah. the like. like we, let's we've actually the that way. You know? There's actually the um, look. We recorded this episode a couple of days ago, and um, with the reaction from Ashley and uh, Dylan was for the first time thinking of actually adding beeps and bleeps into the episode, but got flashbacks of Towers of Thousand. Um, and thought, you know what? We'll just re-record it with the two of us for the best. Let's just, you know, yeah, get rid of him. Be positive about it because it was a good showcase. It was great. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, today on the show, <laughs> we will be talking about that Xbox developer direct thing. Talking about uh, Power World, which I think Karen started by the sounds of reading between the lines and everything about that. Um, and then go over a few other things, including Prince of Persia is the first uh, big game of the year that I've played. Firstly, before we get any of that, though, what have you been playing over the holiday break, break Karen? That's we're not going to talk about later on the show. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of chill. Like I've played uh, a bunch of more of Dredge, um, and then been enjoying Dredge. Um, been watching a lot of GTA RP streams for No Pixel. Um, I'm very much embroiled in that at the minute in terms of watching and very much wondering you know do i set off on an arc of maybe playing some of that and that'd be fun um but other than that just play bits and pieces um to be honest i was hanging out and waiting for a game like playing some of the finals but hanging out and waiting for a game like um like power world which we'll talk about later um kind of to do to hang out with friends and just to fuck around with and play played some more boulders gate 3 played some more honor mode honor mode is really like honor mode is like the hardest difficulty for boulders gate and it adds adds a bunch of variations into the boss fights or into the harder fights of the game that it doesn't warn you about and uh it's quite funny and like it is like the hardcore mode so as soon as you die you, you die like it's your safe file that's gone oh, no respawns oh they yeah no them. respawns like everything is just done um so yeah messing around with that a little bit that was fun um just super excited for like the next couple of weeks and like just approaching new game releases and just, you know, getting to play more things. The finals, Pal World, connecting fabric. I have, oh. well, I'm going to, there's no confirmation about Pal World. It's just problematic. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, one big thing that I played that I haven't really talked about anywhere else over the holidays because I was playing some Octopath Tra- Tra- Traveler two uh, a lot of that and obviously that ended up in my my top ten list so you can hear me talk about that in the, the last episode that I posted on RK Couch, um, but another game that I put a lot of time into that can get good shit about was the Avatar video game. You fucking you <laughs> fucking dork! You absolute fucking dork! I was. The amount of times I kept seeing, like, because my Discord kept showing me that you were playing it, so cons- I was like, "Why? What the f- you like? Out of all of the games you could be playing right now, you're playing Avatar." I think I just needed that junk food, and it, it sort of it was perfect. There is better junk food that you could have been eating. Like what? You could have just played Baldur's Gate, which isn't That's even not junk, junk food, though. but like it is. Just as it's amazing, it is like game of the year. You could have been playing, I'm sure it is, but it's not junk food. It is fucking more Breath of the Wild. You could have played more it's Breath not junk of the food Wild. either. You keep naming good games Assassin's Creed Mirage. Could be a good game. I don't know. People say it's a good game. It's more junk, junk food, food than it is. It's more junk food than good game because this Avatar game is it is it's just it's a Ubisoft game, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. And there is an element of that where I could just zone the fuck out of, uh, after these very long uh, work days over Christmas period. I'd come home, I'd turn it on for an hour. I'm a big, big blue person. I'd go take down some fucking, I don't know, area, clear it out of 
guards, you know, whatever. Open up the map. There's a collectible there. Go grab a couple of those. Go to bed. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's sort of it's hitting the spot. You know, like it's just hitting the spot. Oh yeah, it's not bad. I'll say. Like, if, I feel like if you like Avatar, um, the world and everything, they do a they do a pretty damn good job of um recreating the atmosphere and the biomes and stuff that are seen in the the two films. Probably the best thing about the game is just the the how much detail and such a good job they've done at recreating that original world and everything. Um, Cause you like, you, you, of course, like this game has its own version of whatever detective vision shit or whatever. So you can like, you're scanning plants and telling you about them and like all the plants and fauna and whatever else it's all, all the, you know, wildlife and all these like very unique things that you see in the film or um, in this. And, you know, you very quickly, get you the ability to fly around and you can go up into like the, the sky and land on rocks up there floating in the sky for some reason, however that works. And, you know, so I feel like if you like the films, the gameplay is like, whatever, it's just, it's know. just, whatever. it's a first person shooter. Right? It's a first person. It's Far Cry, but like reskinned as Avatar. Yeah. Yep. Well, I mean, they, they at least make one thing that the guns aren't the best part of the game. Like, you get you do get human guns, but they still the if you want to play it, if you get good at the bow and arrow weapons, is still the best, which makes more sense, I guess, for a Navi. I guess like the the only part that ever interested me about that game was more the Navi mounts and creatures that you could kind of befriend and, and use throughout the game. Like I thought that was a cool thing and, and it's a cool element of the lore behind Avatar. But beyond that, I was like, meh. Yeah. The story, so I haven't finished it. I, I I hope you never finish it. If you ever finish <laughs> it, I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna put like twenty something hours into it probably at least. But, oh my god. Um the story's like whatever. It's just I mean, it starts cool, has a cool idea, but it just goes nowhere with it. The, the idea is it's like young Navi kids who are kidnapped at a young age and being brought up within one of the human settlements and basically being raised to like hate their own kind, um, which, you know, you can look at pretty much any culture. It's like here in Australia, that's what happened to indigenous people here, indigenous people yeah. in America. Like it's the same, like it's very mm-hmm. obvious, like what the inspiration is, the terrible inspiration is. Um, but then like after the whole Jake Sully shit happens in the first film, character like locks him in a Cairo the Cairo sleep thing for like 20 years or whatever um they wake back up later and you know then they're like oh we're gonna we're gonna help fight to save the planet now too basically but they but they know nothing of their yeah they kind yeah everything like that so part of the game is them learning about the different clans and their own people and they come from like a clan that doesn't exist anymore and was more or less all killed out so like there's cool ideas but i don't think they really do anything is it like in terms of the setting is it any connection with way of water or whatever that no because it's like like first avatar films like wherever like over on the east Mm -hmm. or wherever and it's like then they travel south or wherever they go for the the water part like imagine this is all the way up like yeah northwest like like yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a completely different so region. So far away that the you'll never have to explain why they don't bump into any of the other characters because they're like, yep. well, it's all the way over here. Like, yep. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's. Oh, hold on. Was there anything else on the phone? Um. Oh, I did start. I'll just give a quick. Uh, I've been playing. They dropped uh, Plants vs Zombies three a couple of days ago on. Um. They so soft launched it in Australia and a couple of territories. Um, it's pretty shit. I've played like 60 levels, I think, which is like three quarters of the game. I like Plants vs. Zombies, but yeah, it's shit. It's just, it's like, similar to Plants vs. Zombies 2, it's EA who have like, they mobile mobilized it and ruined the game. Because mm. the first one, fucking banger. Ruled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. No, this one. I actually one more that I didn't I missed because it's very funny is um uh, there is a a Japanese mobile esque game on the Nintendo Switch called Suica Suica. Oh, I saw you start playing it, the streamer game. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is it is great because you can I the only reason I never got it because 
I didn't realize it was available on the uh, Nintendo store everywhere. I thought you had to Japanese account or fire your Nintendo. Well, no, no, it only came out like in December. I think yeah, in December. Right. And it's only like three, four dollars. Yeah. It is, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's very mindless and very chill out and just, uh, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. I think I did own my Switch one day and saw he was playing that. I'm like, ah. he's being influenced by the influences. I am, I am being influenced by influences. That is 100% true. 100%. All right, let's get into the first big review that I've done for the year. Uh, well, actually, no, it was the first one published on the website. Published two game reviews so far this year, but this was the first one as well. Uh, before we get into my thoughts, though, uh, Kieran, do your best job at doing an Ashley Hobley impression of what you would say, he would say, if I said, the first, tell me about the quality critic score. The quality the critic Persia score. Lost crown. <laughs> Quality critic score for Prince of Persia came up with a 9.0 for the aggregate score. Uh, everybody seems to be pretty much on that same ballpark, around that 8 to, to 9 mark. Um, we've got James Wood over at Wellplay. They gave it a 9.5 out of 10. The Lost Crown feels as if it fell off the back of a truck from the early 2010s, a tightly focused and sharply crafted action platformer that's starts starkly compo- opposed to what we've got to expect from Ubisoft. Um, and, and those thoughts are generally greatly echoed across the board at the moment for Prince of Persia. And I'm very happy to see that it was, um, that it, it's been brought forward in such a way and it's been such a positive way that it feels like a very refreshing thing out of Ubisoft. Yeah. So I gave it a 9.5. So I start the year on a, a banger, uh, which is very good. Obviously, we played this at PAX and playing mm-hmm. it at PAX, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm like a lot more keen now than I was based on the, the trailers and everything like that. But even based on that 15 minutes or whatever it was, probably played it then. Um, I don't think I still could have said like how good this game would turn out to be. And it is fucking unreal. Like it's, it's, it is so good at being a, just a very, very solid Metroidvania. Um, but also it does a lot of things that metroid so if you boil it down and go hey what makes a good metroid fine you're like oh yeah decent combat map design backtrack it backtracking i'm um, getting you abilities like spread out and then those abilities unlocking off areas of the game you know all that that typical sort of shit but the combat in this so much better than it has any right to be it's sort of like devil may cry s combat but in a side scroller um Every boss battle is epic as fuck. The first couple are like whatever, but once you start getting into it, it's they're epic as fuck. They have like full character anime names like pop up, you know, like full slow down zooms in the characters' faces, like says fucking Olaf the Destroyer or some anime as fuck screen shit happens. Then you go into this massive fight and you've got to use all your abilities and it gets insane. Um, music's epic, but then outside that, it's like okay, comics combat's cool. Okay, exploring is cool, but what else is great about it? It's like, well, they improve upon one of Metroidvania's biggest problems, which is just getting your head around and understanding the map. And there's one feature in this game which a lot of people have wrote about, and most people probably know at this point, but they have a thing called memory shards in the game, which it's like no one can make a Metroidvania now without this feature. Like, they've, they, they have done, they've invented something for a genre that I just don't think we can go back without. Because if you're at any point, if you come across like a chest and you can clearly see that like, you're like, oh, maybe I need like a grappling hook or like a something to get up there. I'll, I'll probably get it later in the game. You're like, yep, yeah, I'll definitely not remember where this secret room is later. Um, but you can now press down on the D-pad and it will just like take a screenshot of where you are and save it on the map. So then when you hover over the map later, you can literally cursor over that and it'll have that screenshot there. And you can be like, oh, that's right. That's where that thing was. I can probably get that now because I know how to, to get that's there. Sweet. That's like, really cool. It's, it's game changing for understanding how to get around and find your way um, to secrets or even just where you're supposed to go later in the game and stuff like that. Um, and then the platforming. So that when you get towards the... I'd say the halfway point onwards, the platforming starts getting a lot more tense, but in a good way. Um, And the core pathway for the game has some challenging combination 
of what you've got to do once a game hands you a few skills so it's like well, once you've unlocked like you know the typical shit of like okay double jump and dash and what like enough to start getting into like some actual platforming stuff but then there is some optional uh secret areas and stuff that if you go looking for them that this goes full celeste with its you know like platforming stuff it's like Shit, fully okay. fully spiked ledgers stuff it's like okay well um you know it's like go this touch this this reset your jump f- slide down the side of this dash across d- you can double jump back up there touch this thing or reset it like you got to got to do it and it's that thing of you just do it like you sit there for dying 50 times in a row and eventually getting you feel like you're a god you know so <laughs> but it's like it's it's frustrating but because it like instantly restarts you which is my my thing like I, I need no downtime like if i hit those fucking spikes send me back to i just need to be back i need to be trying again like mm-hmm. that's my number one frustration so um the story is interesting it's fine that's probably i guess the, the main downfall for the game um Everything else is like stellar, the art design as well, and everything else. But the world's really cool. The idea is is cool. I just don't think they they expand upon enough. Basically, the game starts and like of a Prince of Persia games. I can't remember how much of this they explained in the demo thing we played at Pack. Probably not a lot. A little bit, but the thing is, I skipped over it. I think both me and you. I think you and I did. Yeah, skipped the story because <laughs> we're like, we're like we don't want game. this. We just want to play the game in the, yeah. the whatever period of time we had to play it. Yeah. Um. So you play as Sargon, who is not a prince or would-be prince of Persia, so it's a little bit different to past games. Uh, Persian warrior, part of a group called the Immortals, which are a group of like eight, I can't remember, I think they're around eight or six, something like that. People, they're basically like the, the secret service protectors of the Persian royal family. Like these are the badass motherfuckers you, that you don't want to come up against. Yeah. Um, they're all, and this is the thing, they introduced and you're like damn these are some cool looking characters and the game obviously for at least two of them one or two of them spends enough time to to justify how cool they all look and sound and whatever else but then the others just don't get anywhere near enough time which is i don't know it's one of those things where it's a downfall i'm like yeah okay well the game was like i don't know how long it took me i can't remember like 16 hours probably to beat it um but it's like, okay, well, you want to drag it on so you can expand upon those character stories. But, but I'm like, yeah, but they all look so cool. Like, I just want, <laughs> I just want, but like a little bit more story detail for every single one of these people because they all look um, so cool. And again, anime is fuck. They all get like intros and whatever else. So, uh, but yeah, overall, the game is very, very, very good. I feel like it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of come out. I don't know if they realized, maybe Ubisoft didn't realize how good or how well received this would be because and again i, I didn't know if I, other people would like it as much as me because it's like you, you know you're doing the work it, and it comes out and everyone loves it so it seems to be consistent with ubisoft where their main titles are so often just kind of as you've called avatar like junk food where they kind of have these smaller side projects that they released that are fucking like really good like there was um you know over time like they're really good and people are very surprised by it and it, so many people often ask like why Ubisoft doesn't value those kinds of titles a lot more than they actually are and it's just because it goes back to the, the whole monetization possibility out of the games like those like they, they can't be monetized the same way these big Ubisoft games are mm. and I mean I guess that they they sort of like hedge their bets here because they, I assume around the same time, they were like, yes, you can do the Metroidvania Prince of Persia game, which is new uh, and do new things and try new things. But also let's do a remake of one over here. <laughs> you know, like, um, and that one got rebooted and had to get restarted, which says a lot for how that was going. Meanwhile, this one comes out and everyone's like, this is great. hundred <laughs> so. percent. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon? Not something, even after playing it pack, something you'd, no, no, no. I'm actually like literally I'm sat here being like, sounds like it could be a pretty good like even if it's just a chill out and just stream it game, maybe, maybe first foray into like random streams would be Prince of Persia games could be really fun. I think it would be good because and honestly, if especially I, I was about when you said chill, I was like the game can actually get quite hard. But it does have um 
if you ever get stuck, I wouldn't even feel bad. I've seen I would say the, the reason the more I say chill is because it's not something that's like it doesn't. I would be able to interact with chat fine. It yeah. would be like a good kind of, and it would also have that thing of I'm going to fuck up a lot of jumps and probably get very frustrated at sections. And that's, you yeah. know, that is content and entertainment. Like that's, that's fun. So it could very much be a good stream game. I think it's for me, I have to decide which of the two games I probably pick up this week, which is between Prince of Persia or Infinite Wealth. And I think they're two very different games with very different um, positions. Yeah. Well, this one you could finish and Infinite Wealth, you probably won't finish. That is also... <laughs> what was your, your playtime for it? What was your... Yeah, I think it was around 16 hours. Yep. I think. No, 100%. That's the thing is, and that's the other thing is like, I don't want to start Infinite Wealth because Final Fantasy, even though Final Fantasy comes out towards the end of Feb. It's a month away, but then you're like, damn. But, but Infinite Wealth is no way I'm going to finish Infinite Wealth or get far enough into Infinite Wealth in a month while also studying and work. Yeah, well, I think says 15 hours or more. So, wait, I swear I took a screenshot of my playtime. Oh, I did, hold on. 15 hours, 24 minutes. Yeah. So that sounds like a perfect... 67% completion. So Yeah. Like no, that sounds perfect. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Uh, yes, I highly suggest everyone checking it out. But again, I, the only warning I'd say is the boss fights can get quite hard. Um, not... Isn't not that cheap, just kind of... hard, but like it's, isn't it's that a game kind of you, Isn't that the norm nowadays, though? Like... I think it, because of games like Elden Ring and Dark Souls and stuff, boss fights are becoming just consistently harder across all games. Yeah, I guess. But like, but they give you the the, the thing is this: you can just change the difficulty whenever you want. So yeah, hundred percent. Like the, and like Souls games, it's like Souls games make you want to do made everyone want to do harder games, but people don't jump juggle juggle down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In my defense, <laughs> 12 o'clock and... is not afternoon. <laughs> 12 o'clock is afternoon. No. 12 immediately is the start of the afternoon, it's, actually. It's especially, not, especially not when one of your team members is living in another state with daylight savings. That's your fault. <laughs> All right, joining us now for the show, Asher Hall. Oh, hey, excited oh, to be here on time. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Man, it really ruins our oh. intro because we Turns said you up. weren't here because we didn't want you to talk about Xbox, so. <laughs> That's fair. I know, I don't know if you didn't see it, Kieran. I knew he was joining because A, he messaged, but B, at some point he wrote below the news, let me know when it's a good point to join I Ash in the doc that. file here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's put it in, <laughs> underlined in bold. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, we just finished talking about Prince of Persia. That's as far as we've got. So we haven't got that far. Um, I hear it's good. You'll be happy now. Kieran did your his best impression of doing the quality critics segment for you. So oh, good. I got yeah. you. I got you. It lived on. Nailed it. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right. Let's get in to where Ash just. Uh, wrote all over it. Uh, the first, <laughs> the first big uh, game stream thing that happened in 2024, the developer underscore direct 2024 Xbox showcase. Um, was it four? No, fuck, I forgot how many games. It's five, five, five games. Five, it was announced five, as four. four, and then they had a fifth uh, mystery game. Yeah, so four, Surprise. four games that are like. Xbox things and one where someone else was like, Can we show up too? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to be on Game Pass, but let us on. <laughs> um, and that was Square Enix. Karen, what did you think of the developer direct showcase? This was great in like a really positive way to start the year out for Xbox. Do I think all these games come out this year? God, no. But they said they is will, it, it, they said they will? I did, especially two of them. I'm question marks and i'll be surprised if they both come out this year but um i i think it was a really positive start and i think is if xbox follows through on this i think it sets them up to be in a much better position within the gaming space ash 
yeah, obviously it was a good showcase. They're like fully committed to the bit of it being like a, uh, what was it? Like a, like a graphic file, I guess. They like can move shit yeah. around to like, um, and yeah, I mean, all of them look pretty solid. Uh, if, and yeah, like Kieran kind of said, as long as they can actually deliver, I think, you know, if they actually come out, that's, that's the key thing. I, I, don't really i don't have, personally have any doubts i think probably all of them are at i would expect to hit this year would be my assumption uh based on what they said and what the games actually are and that kind of stuff so yeah positive doesn't have games coming out this year <laughs> I mean, yeah finally it looks like they've pulled this shit together and have releasing some games so phil spencer went around to some studios and said for fuck's sake Listen, Just we put don't, it out. You know, I think. I think if they were if angry pulls, about Redfall for a while, but at least they had something. <laughs> I think if this ship pulls through and they have these four releases, I think this then starts a bit of a tidal wave of consistent content for the next couple of years, at the very least, um, for Xbox in general. Like I could see if they aim and do four this year, and then they can commit to doing that kind of number every year. I think that would be what they're collection of studio should be able to do all right uh, yeah I, I um yeah very solid uh show only one game i didn't really care about that's just personal preference um and it didn't go for too long anyway so um but otherwise lots of good shit in here so let's start with avowed so that's how the show started uh obviously the our first full-on direct uh look at the gameplay and world of uh, obsidian's new creation which was announced and then after they brought bethesda everyone was like what's the fucking point of use anymore <laughs> like, <laughs> you know but i feel like watching this and having them explain it at least to me this doesn't this like it is a first person rpg but it doesn't look anything like an Elder scrolls games or you know doesn't look like a bethesda game to me you know so i think i don't think there's going to be too much cross crossover there like the the, um, maybe the world, I guess. Like uh, you could be like, yeah, that looks it, looks it. But combat wise, being able to choose between all these different types of weapons and even like dual, dual wielding wands and just going fucking spell spell ham crazy and or even a wand and a sword or whatever and a gun and whatever the fuck else. So, um, Kieran, what do you think of Avowed? I thought it looked great. Um, I I will be very happy if this game does come out this year. I could see this game also copying a delay, maybe. Um, I think you know. I absolutely adored uh, Outer Worlds. I see getting more of that this time. Um, I'd love to know what the scope of this or the kind of the idea of this game is in terms of being open world or, or not, because the way they spoke about it throughout it seemed like there was different regions or different areas that people would be going through in an order, particularly. Um, so I'm interested to see how that's laid out. I think it maybe has the most one of the best like splash screens or kind of um promotional sc- like images that has been in some key time art? like i think the, the key, key art, art. Yeah, yeah i think the key art looks fucking amazing i think it's the most um, talked about part of this yes 100 <laughs> percent. which yeah, is no concerning I, I don't know yeah yeah but i i think i think the only maybe downside to this was that most of the gameplay that we saw was very much um, what seemed to be like, uh, I guess, arenas, like developer arenas, where they just put in people to show the combat. I wish we'd seen more of the kind of game to game, moment to moment gameplay, but I'm sure we will see more of that throughout the year as we get closer to its release date, mm. which it doesn't actually have yet. Mm. Spring 2024 release window. Yeah. Yep. Ash? Uh, I thought it looked. Fine. Like a lot of my faith in this game is coming from really enjoying the Outer Worlds and obviously Obsidian's history. I don't think the combat looked super interesting or good. <laughs> uh, but, you know, obviously, I don't think Outer Worlds combat was fantastic either. Like it was the storytelling and the, the missions and the, the world that got you more invested in that. So I suspect it'll be a similar sort of thing here. Um, yeah, I think, like Kieran said, this, it didn't help that this segment was very combat heavy like it was like you said a lot of arenas and stuff i think i would wait i'll wait till i see like an extended gameplay segment like let's run through a mission and see 
uh, but them talking about like the player choice and all that kind of stuff, very much evoking Outer Worlds. Um, so so like that this kind of one side has, character <laughs> is going to be super, super important. Can, they can either be really happy or really upset, yeah. depending on what you say. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm intrigued, but yeah, I'm waiting to be you know blown away. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, my takeaway was it looks fine, but at least it looks different enough from Elder Scrolls that mm. we we don't have to go through that argument. He's got a wand. Month, so. Yeah, they don't have those in Elder Scrolls. Yeah, done. Kieran's like trying to think, but he's like, no. I'm trying to think. No, I'm pretty sure it's like hand gestures, right? It's all, magic. it's all staffs, I think. I think it's yeah, staffs. staffs. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not one, so. Uh, then we got Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Official release date, finally, May 21st. Not a new trailer for the game, but they, they just did like a presentation. I Very cool. Obviously, everyone sounds very attached to this character of Senua, attached to this world, wanting to you know everyone sounds very passionate about it um it is part of me is like especially when they announced it's a digital only 50 dollar game you know like it's a it's a because it's going to be like six hours like the first one I'm like that's fine that all sounds great to me but like there is part of me that goes holy fuck how did this take so long like it, and it there's mm. that element of we well, just like fine-tuning shit that really isn't gonna like matter for I, 99% of players <laughs> like that like oh do you see how fucking in-depth her hair is now and i'm like cool but like <laughs> you know <laughs> i think it, it maybe comes down to the technology involved in the game and like the stuff with the um the audio aspects of the game and maybe just fine tuning but i'm really happy that ninja theory didn't do the thing where so many uh, you know indie developers or developers that have success at the rate the original hellblade had where they're like right we're gonna go from this really tight like six to eight hour experience and we're now gonna make a full-blown open world 20 30 40 plus hour adventure out of it and it feels shit i'm really happy that they are sticking with what worked originally for them um like the original hellblade was digital only i think it fits into everything that was when it initially released at least it might have got a physical release afterwards yeah i, um, I think it got one but later an, but it was digital only initially yeah it was uh, digital only on playstation as well like it was yeah, yeah it was pretty much in the same boat that cell that, that hell Bay 2 is so um i'm excited i think um yeah i think they've done a, a good job with it i'm i'm glad it's finally coming out i'm glad it got a fucking release date they just need to stick to that release date and send it out. Like, don't do not do a cyberpunk, don't move dates a billion times, just hit that mark and just get it out. I feel like they'd surely have to be sure now. They, yes. They've shown this game for years. <laughs> they showed it when the fucking Xbox Series X was coming out, like... They and they still they never even put a year or a month or a like nothing until mm. May twenty first. So surely they've got to be certain of it. Um, but yeah, I'm, Ash, how do you feel about it? I don't obviously it's not really. Yeah, it's, it's not my type of game. I'm yeah. excited that it looks good. Uh, everyone's invested. It's got a date. It's uh, you can pre-install it. You know, I think I'm sure that instills a lot of confidence. Um, yeah. It's coming. Although it's interesting to see, like, kind of people getting upset about, oh, it's only eight hours long. Only eight hours long. Oh, it's only a digital release. It's like, what did you think this was? It's very much similar to the first game. Uh, yeah, just fanboys being weird. Hmm. I, I think my thing is just, especially when we're looking at the past year of game development. And like this, this question of what has to change to like help stabilize the industry. There's part mm. of me that goes, could someone go in and look at this project and wrap their head around why it took so long and did it need to take so long? Because there, there is part of like if you're a, if you're in a business, you've got to release shit to make money. And I'm like, I'm happy. Well, oh, here's my money. Like, did it did it actually need to take this long? Like. I'm the thing is I'm sure Xbox and Microsoft already do that, but it's not going to be a public thing ever. 
No, of course not. But I, I it's just I I just think it's something I'm gonna be asking myself a lot more after this year as games come out, just based on last year and a lot of conversations around the industry because I mean, to put it into context, this game was announced twenty nineteen. Yeah. So they've been working on this game for five years. Yeah. At the, at, at minimum. Yeah. So And look, it's one of my most anticipated games of the year. I'm super excited for it. I assume it'll be very good. Love the first one. Everything I see about this looks mm-hmm. fantastic. But again, my thing is like, you just can't take that long. I don't, I don't most people can't. Unless you're like, I don't know, the GTA, right? Yeah, you unless you're Rockstar here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you just, you can't. Like, you should have been onto the third one by now. I feel like you just, you should have had the money. Like, I could have brought it no, twice. No, you can't take this long unless you're working on other things at the same time, which, you know, admittedly, they mm. did release one or two other projects in between. Yeah, um, how'd they go? Not great, but... <laughs> <laughs> Get your rollerblades on, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, then we had Visions of Manus. So this is where Squ- Square Enix stuck into, snuck their way into the show um, to bring Visions of Mana, the brand new... Uh, mana series game uh this whole segment was done in a very sort of hey for like it makes sense because it's for xbox xbox doesn't have the lineage with the franchise that of a but it's coming to everything would. it's coming to everything but I, I think the way they did the show and they did the, like the history and being like mana series is originally a final fantasy so, like it was all like very like it's as close as you're gonna get know, <laughs> <laughs> to to understanding what this RPG series is and the history and why people like it. And you can tell they were sort of pitching it to the Xbox fan base as here's why you should care about this. But also if you know about it, here's some other cool things. Um, here's Kochiichi talking about what they're bringing to the table, the monster designs. We've got this cool new wolf thing that's very cute. You can ride that. Have fun. You know? Right. So yeah, just Square Enix and I guess Xbox trying to continue their their partnership. But this, this isn't a yeah, it's coming to everything. It's not an Xbox Game Pass title or anything like that. So, yeah. do anyone anyone have thoughts on Visions of Mana? I've never been like I think the Mana series has a ridiculous amount of games in it. Um, yeah. I've never been a massive fan into it, but it looks interesting enough. I think. For me, if it was on Game Pass, it'd be something to try out, but it's not probably not something I'm going to go out and individually buy. Yes, fair. Winter 2024, yeah. also, by the way. Yeah, so similar we'll feelings. It looks cool. I mean, it's very cute. I think with just the wit or throwing thing, I didn't think it would be that adorable creatures, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Based on like the, the, the bad guy. The are cute. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see. Uh, then we got our, our uh, History Untold coming spring 2024. Uh, I don't think any of us... Oh, no. Ash, do you care about this at all? It's a, I mean, it's a, in, I'm intrigued. I'd be willing to give it a go when it drops on Game Pass, but, you know, I nothing there kind of uh, made it distinguish itself from a Civ 6. Okay? Mm. I'm like, why? what makes this different? And I didn't really get anything other than... There seems to be future stuff that you can unlock eventually. But yeah, yeah it just seems right. like another Civ from the former developers of Civ. Basically. That's what I got, but I was like, I don't yeah. know if I don't care enough about it. We're not the, that hardcore in that uh God, yeah, to, to understand that world. What you know, when did, I, when I play those games, I try and get like the alternative uh uh You try and get to like win, the one win. And then you yeah. just end up building a massive army and wiping everybody else out because it's, you know, <laughs> that's easiest. <laughs> and then we ended the showcase with Indiana Jones and The Great Circle officially getting titled Machine Games latest entry into Punching Nazis in first person. Uh, it's coming in 2024. <laughs> uh, it's set somewhere between Raiders of the Lost Ark and The Last Crusade. And for people who are online and don't know as much about Indiana Jones as apparently I do, um, for some reason, because they, they saw that on screen and I saw people online later saying, that doesn't make sense. You're just saying it's set during Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom is the second film, but it's actually the first in the, the series. It's a so. prequel. It's a prequel, yeah. So for people, that's why they saying it takes place between Raiders and Last Crusade. Anyway, uh, Troy Baker voice, voices Indy in this. There's a brand new character. They've gone full in on stealth 
mechanics. You can go in, shoot people if you want. The whip does everything. Um, Kieran, what do you think of Indiana Jones and a great? This story? looks great. This looks really good. Like I think the opening. Um, I think the most important part of an Indiana Jones title is a great villain. And I think it already shows that they've got that kind of down pat. And, you know, Wolfenstein games have fantastic, amazing villains in them. So to, to have that here in um, the Great Circle is great. I was in love with Indy at the very start when the trailer first popped. And then when somebody, when I really found out it was Troy Baker, doing the voice and then listened again a second time. I was like, oh, okay, that's Troy Baker doing a Harrison Ford impression. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I feel like it's probably something that'll just be okay and we'll just go into normal once I play the actual game. Um, I love the fact that they are, like the gameplay looks like it flows seamlessly between the third person when he's doing climbing and stuff in the first person. Um, so you're not, Currently losing out on playing as Indiana Jones, you're seeing the character. Um, I think it looks great. I'm excited for it. I am. It feels really fucking nice that for Xbox to have this. Like, it feels really good that Xbox finally has an exclusive and like an, an IP exclusive. Like, you know, how many Xbox fans feel about not being able to play Spider Man on their console? Like, I feel like this is going the other way a little bit with Indiana Jones on the on the platform, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, you can swing around in this too, so it's basically mm. the same. <laughs> Ash? Uh, yeah. Clearly a bold and clear vision for what they want to do with the game. I think it's it's very interesting. They've like completely doubled down on it. Indy looking exactly like Harrison Ford, um, which are pretty uncommon for like licensed games or like I, I just didn't expect it to look like Harrison Ford, I guess. I thought they would go with their own character design for Indiana Jones. Um, but yeah, it looks interesting, I guess, you know. Obviously, some elements, like the first person, kind of is, in, like, I guess it, in that way, it kind of just distinguishes itself from, like, it's similar kind of games in the genre of, like, Tomb Raider or, or Uncharted mm-hmm. and, like, uh separates in that regard but like it's kind of weird to see the whip kind of fly out and hit people in the face from first person <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff i don't know um but yeah it looks like it they've got- how do you think it works just because you see it from behind his head and <laughs> in the movies yeah but you know you come yeah you know you can see the entire whip go back and then go forward you know you see the mm. entire motion you know it's a, a bit it's about getting the timing right i think which will be mm. tricky <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it looks like they've clearly got an interesting story. Like obviously Todd Howard heavily involved, um, with a vision of what he wants to, what this Indiana Jones game is going to be. Um, yeah, it looks like it's reasonably far along. So hopefully it is going to hit its date. Um, and Xbox can finally have a good game. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, this is. If it's going to release, it's going to release in the back end of the year. So by it's going to be a December. Have, yeah, I, they I should have hopefully this. had Hellblade and Avowed by then. So mm-hmm. that's true. Which hopefully, hopefully one of them three <laughs> <laughs> is a good game. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Yeah, me too. Uh, no, I, I definitely, I, I'm all about. I think the f- the first person is the the key decision that will lead to this actually standing out. Cause if it was third person, it would have a hundred percent just been like, Oh, it's Tomb Raider. It's uncharted. Like what's the difference mm. really? You know, like how, how do you separate this? You maybe when playing it, you can truly tell the difference, but I can't tell you if it was third person, people would just be taking screenshots and being like, Oh, these games look the same. <laughs> yeah. You know, to a degree. So, uh, and I, I love how they've, they're talking about getting the whip mechanic, right? Which hopefully they have, because you know, similar to swinging in Spider Man or the axe in um, God of War, I, I feel yeah. like that's yeah, you know, they they perfect that and the game's great. So, because um, I if I can play the whole game just using the whip, mm-hmm. that's how I'm gonna play it. Sneak around, whip motherfuckers in the face, tie them up, run around, awesome. All right, that's everything from the Xbox. The 2024 February developer underscore direct I can continue to say it that way because they write it that way. Let's jump in to the next piece of news, which is interesting. 
So, <laughs> VGC writes, Power World embroiled in AI and Pokemon plagiarism controversy. Power World <gasps> by studio, Japanese studio Pocket Pair released into early access on PC and Xbox on Friday and immediately became a breakout success with its creator claiming 2 million in sales in 24 hours. <laughs> it's nothing. Day before did that. Uh, the huge launch exposure inevitably right, uh, re- reignited disc- discourse that has followed Power World since its announcement around the character designs apparent similarities to Pokemon. Although the gameplay of Power World is closer to that of survival games like Ark and Rust, and Game Freak series, many social media users have noted the obvious influences its characters' designs have taken from the Nintendo series. Following Power World's release on Friday, some ex-users collated perceived similarities between Power World's pals and Pokemon. Quote, it's not even subtle about how it rips off. How much else has it stolen? I want to like Power World, but I don't know if I can support running existing Pokemon through a fuser and passing them off as new IP. And people have uploaded screenshots and stuff like that um blah, blah 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 the situation is further muddled in the eyes of some by pocket pocket pairs historical relationship with generative ai tools artist zay noted on x that one of its previous titles ai art imposter <laughs> <laughs> a game which literally uses utilizes ai image generator as its core mechanic user also highlighted multiple historical X posts by Pocket Pair CEO Takuro Mizobi, in which he appeared to praise the potential of AI image generators for content creation. The use of generative AI is a significant pressure point in many creative industries, including video games, with tools such as blah, 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 blah. Kira. You're playing, yes. you're playing the, the Pokemon Power World game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, yep. How's it making you feel? Why do you hate human beings? Why do you hate people in jobs? <laughs> the thing is, like, there, there is. <laughs> I was because I looked into this today when when I read this article that there is no actual confirmation that AI is being used in this game. It's potentially there, and it's based on 2021 data when everybody was fucking around with AI. Um, the basis I'd, is people going. That looks like fucking AI, and then going to the CEO's Twitter page and this motherfucker being like, it's "Like, yes, AI is, AI is fantastic." <laughs> <laughs> so, although, yes, you're right. There's no solid proof. There there's is no, enough to bear uh, conversation. There's a conversation about it. Um, I think it's. I think it sucks. It does suck, and I, you know, I. It, I think it's very different this coming from a Japanese studio compared to a Western based studio or a larger studio. Um, because Japanese studios or Japanese companies in general probably won't see the same problems that Westernized studios will in general, um, with their workload. So it'll be interesting to see how that comes from it. I think with terms of like the Pokemon plagiarization, yes, a lot of the Pokemon are very the, the pals, and I call them Pokemon all the time when I'm playing, are very heavily influenced by Pokemon. You can see in probably every single pal multiple influences from multiple different Pokemon in the one pal. I, I guess one of the biggest things is for me is it 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 kind of points not that the success is because of the AI or is because of the creatures or because it looks like Pokemon. I think the success of this comes from showing kind of retroactively how bland and stale Pokemon games have been and what people want from Pokemon and from this style of game. Um, I think just playing it, and I never played Arceus, like I, I never played Pokemon Legends, but this game is really fun to play multiplayer it's really great to you know adventure and capture different different pals how it, the different pals <laughs> i'm gonna stutter every time i go to say pal and it's fucking the worst and, and, and how they all interact differently with base building and the survival aspects of this game i think really good like at the heart of it i you know where this could lead to um 
Nintendo and Game Freak kind of going after um, Pocket Pairs legally. I wish it turns into Nintendo being like, you know what? Let's can we make this game but with Pokemon? Can can we make this game like or this style of game but with the Pokemon IP? I was about to say I don't know if they want to make this game with Pokemon. No, like you know, so you where they've got course, human slavery and guns and well, you know. the human slavery is I don't think I haven't looked into it, but I don't believe it's an intended <laughs> fucking. Are you sure? I think it's just part of being an early access that you can capture NPCs. I think that's the the thing there. Uh, but I think no, that was like, a selling feature. I think there is a lot about this game that we need to change. Like it's really funny when a. Uh, when a pal breaks out of the ball when you attempt to capture it, the text on the side actually says, pal's name has broken out of the ball, cheeky bastard. And I was like, I can't believe that actually fucking... Like, there is an edginess to this, I think is fucking cringe and is a bit poor taste. But I think the basis of this game is the reason why this game is so fucking popular. And why there are so many people trying to play it and so many people trying to enjoy it. Because this is exactly what people want to do with the Pokemon IP. But, because here's the thing, if you, people have like looked up the developer and it's like, they do this thing where they just keep like making games and then they abandon them when they, and then they like start the next one. So their, their last game prior to this was a game called Craftopia, open world, Rust inspired crafting game thing Mm -hmm. it's got creatures and shit like that but it doesn't have like the capturing element it doesn't it doesn't have like the pokemon element of it um from what people can see it's like they they shut that game down after people put a bunch of money into it and they're like yeah we can't be bothered supporting it anymore and then they like started power world and they took like all the elements from craftopia and just added pokemon on top of it so then they're like fuck that game wasn't as successful as we need it to be what is the key thing we're missing let's pick a popular franchise pokemon we combine it with our game Craftopia. We add guns. America. But so so are you now <laughs> suggesting are you now suggesting that Pokemon owns the monster based kind of capturing or fighting companion style genre? No, because other people have done that sort of stuff, but not this blatantly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's never like the fact like Pokemon's been down this road with Digimon before. They didn't try and sue them, though. I I think I don't think Nintendo is actually going to do anything. I I think, or if even if they do, I think there's enough satire. There's enough satire or like uh, changes uh, to justify it, and there's probably not in the in Nintendo's best interest. And I have a funny feeling this game is eventually going to die out on its own. So, yeah, um, I, I give this game less than six months, and then once the, once everyone's had their fun with it, once so, other games actually start coming out, yeah. <laughs> then um, you know, I feel like a hundred percent this game is meme, uh, just meme, meme, potential. meme. Like that's the the meme of it being Pokemon with guns is like generating the interest. Um, I'd be interested to see if the they're saying two million in sales. Is that actually people buying a game, or is it people like downloading it on Game Pass? Uh, so um, every the sales are coming from a lot of the sales is Steam based, because you mm. won't get those sales through Xbox this quickly. Okay, but yeah, I think it's just people wanting to get on the joke while they can before I, everybody loses interest. I think the key word there that you said while you were talking about it is like people are trying to enjoy this game, <laughs> trying. People, people like tweet, you, tweet. But I get it, like because people like yourself, Karen. They just you just want game. You just want new games to play with friends. Um, it is the thing. And when something comes out that like everyone's happy to jump on, it's like it's always going to be successful because we always talk about how the shitty game can s- still feel good if you're playing it with friends. <laughs> you know, like yeah. But I don't like the thing is I've played spent time in this on my own and I still enjoyed my time with it enjoyed exploring like is it something i'm going to put hundreds of hours into god no but is it something that you know like uh, i don't think there has been meme games before but they've never had this success like i think this is uh, that's because they didn't blatantly rip off another no but like 
sure you can look at it as blatantly ripping off but then also you go all right if this game could do this without the fucking pokemon ip why the fuck do we keep getting the shit the game freak is pumping out with pokemon because they don't want to make this no no no, but they don't need to make the gun elements right they don't need to make the gun elements they don't need to make the meme elements or anything like that right but you have that ip why aren't you doing something more with that IP to push that, that game further, you know? Because they already sell millions and millions of copy doing what they always do. Why would you... Until you see a massive dip in sales, I don't think there's any incentive to, like, stretch... And they've been taking tiny steps. Also, they're also... Minuscule uh, steps. Small steps. They're also held back by the technology of the Nintendo Switch, which, you know... Is a this game pretty is, big factor. This game is a 27 gig download. It doesn't really matter how big it is. Like. No, no, no. But like this game is not a fucking technical marvel of any kind of sort. Like this Power World could run on a Switch. That would but. be some problems. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm just saying, like, we can't, we can't, I, I can't. <sighs> no, I don't think. Yeah. And, no, actually, no. I don't think even... to the standard the Pokemon Company will want the game to be would run on the Nintendo Switch. Fucking Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, but you don't have millions. No, of don't, no, around. no. You are no Tears of the fucking Kingdom runs on Switch. I don't know. Tears of the Kingdom didn't even make Explosion Network's top ten games of last year. So yeah, but that's because we're fucking weirdos that didn't play the fucking game. <laughs> What did like like in the most common top three games of last year ran on the fucking Switch? You can't go telling me that the fucking you can't replicate that magic. That how many years did they take developing that game? They do that with Pokemon, <laughs> but they want nobody want... forcing them. Nobody people for... want an annual Pokemon release. We don't get That's an annual Pokemon demand. release. We, we don't get annuals. Do. We get very close to an annual Pokemon release. You're fuck off very sort. close to it. You are fucking moving the goal point post to make it. It's either a mainline game, a piece of DLC, or some sort of spinoff every year. No, but that's fucking... That is fucking nothing, though. Yeah, like, that is, but like, people like, buy it. Like, <laughs> it's like, like, sure, people fucking buy it, but do we want to be okay with that as a fucking community and as an industry? That we're okay with the fucking money grubbing, uh, like nature Kieran, of it. They're, they keep employing all these people, so I don't see what the problem is. It's fucking Nintendo. <laughs> they're going to be able to employ these people no matter what. How many years has it been between because they Zelda continue games? To do right? solid no, no, no. How like many this? years is it between Zelda games? Uh, five. Not it's like not five, long. six they're, years. Didn't they right? release Link to the Past? Just a. Oh, mainline fucking that's a different studio you fuck it's not the same fucking studio each time this is actually not nah, why are we giving nintendo such an easy pass out of this when they could be so much fucking better why are we not holding them to a higher standard and saying so we want better if, games if, out of if them this game if it, if it comes out that they did just use ai tools to copy pokemon he's still gonna say that nintendo is the worst one for like if if they want to be lazy with their own IP and idea, that's one thing. But for someone else to then just use even lazier and just use a tool to copy that it, shit. The thing like, is, right? It depends on what level the AI was used for. Here like is what, Pokemon. What, make them different. If it's that, just- right? if, <laughs> no, no, no. If it's that, and it's actually like sure, that's bad. But like, at least they're fucking trying to do something with that style, right? Like. The, uh, are they really though because all they've done is they've just taken a bunch of and again i know like the, this there is a thing there the is thing is i think both a, of you are neither of you have played the game right no, no i don't want to and you, you like that's the thing right you're talking about the game as if it is just pokemon and there's nothing else no about no but this, 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 no. Is my, this is what this is my point like so it's a game which by all means is just and this was gonna say there's a thin line at times between like like 
saying that, oh, you're just trying to copy like a, a hot trend or whatever. But there's a game that's very obviously just trying to chase after hot trends. It's it's just mm-hmm. taken Pokemon. It's taken the most popular survival sim stuff uh, that people like playing, the Rust. And, like everything about this game, you keep talking about like it's highly original. I think it's I'm not talking original. like, no, just, no, I'm not talking, no, 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 I'm not talking, no, no, no. I'm not talking about this being highly original because it's not highly original. But... If it's not fucking highly original, why isn't Nintendo doing it themselves? That is my biggest frustration to, about this. Because people but buy like, two, spend $2 what? million dollars in a Pokemon but game anyway. Why? <laughs> yeah. Like, th- this is the thing. We They could do so... Like, this is the frustrating thing is it could be... Pokemon as a franchise could be so much better. And if we're yeah. resting on just the fact of, oh, it's okay. So is Hogwarts Legacy okay because it sold so much? No, like, like, is the well? same. Like, it, <laughs> well, is, yeah, it was it, the highest selling game. Last year. It was the highest selling game of last year. Was it really? Yeah, it was Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah. At least in the US and stuff, it was. Yes, those people who said they were going to buy multiple wow. games to, to they screw really, them, they, they really, really did. They really they did. Really they really but like, we can't. I just don't. I don't like this. It's okay because it sells. It's a, we can companies being okay with blandness because it sells and that we as well, a community Well, I'm not saying okay it's okay. I'm that. just saying, like, they like it, it is there. And I don't yeah. think they're necessarily putting out bland games. Obviously, the last few games have reviewed solidly. Um, I don't think you, sh- you... I don't think we as consumers are entitled to re- make, say, why aren't you doing this with your IP? It's like complaining yeah. about Call of Duty. It just does the same shit. Every it's like, year. why isn't Call of Duty a visual but novel? That's the thing. When are we they going to do be. that? No, no, no. But it shouldn't be a visual novel. But they should be... The fact that you can see that uh, people hated the last one, it still sold like fucking. It still sold really well, but that's because, like, it, but as a community, we should still be asking for them for them to be better. Yeah, and people do ask. Yeah, they could be better. Get better. So the the people who I but I don't think you, you can go. You can say you want the game to be better. I don't think you can say I want the game to be completely different. I, f- I feel like you're, you're talking it, from like. But the game is. I don't think that's a fair criticism. Right? I don't think the game is that different. No, but you're also coming from like a completely different. So. I, people that say let's the people I follow who are Pokemon fans and like Pokemon YouTubers and shit like that who play these games every year out and make content. And I've, a lot of those people still complain about them and they're like, you know, like solid entry. I wish this, 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 this. Um, but you're coming from a point of view of like someone who hasn't played these games for so long that you're asking for like such a, a huge change to the game. But where, I don't think it's a huge change though, right? Like this, a massive what this is, game. What, no, no, what, <laughs> what, if you take what Power World is and compare it to Arceus, it is not that far away. Well, then what are you complaining about? It's very similar. No, 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 because Arceus still was bottom of the fucking barrel with it. Of what it could know, it be, of the potential of the it could be, of, it, it, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm clearly, I'm like in the minority of this. Like, I get it, but it's still, I, I see so much. Like, I want Pokemon. Like, personally, I love the Pokemon franchise. I think it's a great IP. I just wish they did more with it, and like, that's I mean, where my frustration is. Yeah. The dream game is always a massive open world uh, game where you can collect as many Pokemon as you want. You can teach them as many moves as they want. We all get to just have fun together in the same place. Hmm. Now, but hold on. Realistically. <laughs> Which they did in the last game, to clarify. You could run around with three other friends in the open world, uh, capture Pokemon together, do raids together. But you, you couldn't achieve well. anything together in terms of like the story or like playing through and building something together. Or... You can play the story at the same time, but you could wander. I don't around. know how you would do any story like that together. You know, but this it's like this, we all this, took this, turns fighting the gym. Yeah, but this is the thing. Like for for the hardcore Pokemon fans, that was enough for a lot of them because the post game is usually just hunting for higher stat. Pokemon or shinies, which you could do with friends now. So that was like that added a communal aspect. You're you're asking for like a, a full co-op Pokemon game, which is like yes. crazy. Yeah. Why is that crazy? Because it like breaks the entire part it breaks of the- Pokemon. <laughs> 
Pokemon's always been about you. It's always been a very singular experience about you. You're the star of the game. It's your road to victory to become the best in the world. Like it's always a very but singular. Experience. Games like Final Fantasy, World of Warcraft, those kind of MMOs are the same. I like that. You are the chosen one in all those in those multi in those MMOs, but they still work out to be MMOs. You're the chosen one, but, yet you still but, have yeah. other people who are also playing with you as the chosen one. There's and there's also the element. And this is the part that I think that this is the number one part that would come up at the Pokemon company when they discuss these things. And it's the thing that is never brought up in this conversation, really, by anyone, including us and other people who have it, which is that the what is Pokemon? Who, who's the target audience? Yeah. It's kids, right? It's kids. And when the second you start talking about MMOs, you're opening them to a world of problems, right? Text chat, voice chat communication trading things like that i guarantee every single time that pokemon company adds an element that allows players to interact with another but, player be that drawing a fucking picture or nicknaming pokemon it goes through like 50 people to sign off on that and say is this okay because they talk about and always treat pokemon for kids now the game isn't all for kids because i play it too but they treat it as a game that is yeah, for kids. i just wish that they allowed either a title within the ip or something to grow up with their fan base because there are so many people that made Pokemon like that, not made it. Cause I think that's a gross way of saying it, but like so many people that were a part of the success of Pokemon in were kids when it started still want to love the game, but they're, you know, our age, they want to have a more developed kind I mean- of, I get what you're saying to it. Like, I, yeah, I disagree to agree because, like, it's no different than like people like they they you see these motherfuckers complain online about how Star Wars should now have BR rated and have blood cutting down because they're the same argument of it was for I'm now growing up and they should age with but the they should cater think, to me. But the thing is, yeah. I think <laughs> no, but uh, I'm not going to that extreme. But like, say, okay, is Andor. And I, I can't ask this question knowing what Andor is about because I've never watched it. But is Andor a, a, a kids focused TV show or is no. Andor more mature? It's more mature, but it's also not anything like Star Wars at all, which is why people didn't watch it like yourself. But also, it has I no think you should watch it. and it's it's the best thing Star Wars ever done. But no one who thing is, I'm off Star Wars. Star Wars no, no, no. It. The thing is, I didn't. The thing is, I haven't watched. Man, like, I, you can't say that because I just haven't watched Star Wars since watching the last movie that they released. I haven't watched Ahsoka. I haven't watched any of the newer seri- seasons of Mandalorian. Yeah, don't watch. Like, as far that, as I'm sure. aware, Luke's. As far as I know, in terms of what I've watched, Luke Skywalker is still hanging out with Grogu somewhere. Like that's that's the last I saw of that show, so it's nothing. I can't say my not watching it is commentary on Andor, Mm -hmm. but I'm asking, is there okay? Take it this way: is there a space within the within Pokemon for a more mature title or a a title that is more based on the aspects? I don't want the like. I've never. I and uh, if I've come off, technically, the answer is always going to be yes. Like if if I've never wanted the mainline Pokemon games. I'm not saying make the mainline Pokemon games this, right? I'm just saying, could another IP, another game within the Pokemon world be like this? Yes, they, should, they could 100% make a more adult oriented Pokemon game. I would say I would never want to see that happen. I would much prefer, no. personally, Pokemon to remain. It's too Why? much of a family property. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a family it, yeah. property, yeah. I I even one game is too much for me. Like Pokemon is kids, it's family. It's no matter it's it's no matter what anime series game it is, Shuri could hand that to Cooper and it's fine. You know, like there's no there's no oh, I better double check this as a parent to make sure it's, so, it's okay. Like once you listen, open that, I don't want room, a I don't want a grown up version of Bluey. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want Bluey dealing with adult Bluey's problems. Bluey, Wiggles, and Wiggles. Dorothy's yeah. Dorothy, right? <laughs> I just, I, I. There is enough adult games content out there. I, I, I don't need Pokemon being brought across to being an adult franchise. Even one game, one game's too many. Because the thing is, once that can's open, then they're like, oh, we'll do another one. 
Maybe another one. I. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm gonna lose. I'm in a losing battle in this one, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna because I don't. I don't agree. I think there is um, space for both kids friendly products of the property as well as adult here, friendly. Here's another thing. Here's, here's like my, I, my biggest thing. I've seen a lot of people say similar stuff to you online. Be like, man, we just want adult games. We want adult games. I'm like, it's a fucking game when you're capturing fucking critters with guns. Like, it's fucking... It's not but the thing is, game. I'm not saying... I'm not... The thing is, I'm not... Okay. I'm not Look so much... penguin talking. with the Uzi. <laughs> no, no, no. It's... You know what? Don't worry about it. Let's just, just move on. <laughs> I gotta read it home before we move on. I gotta read it. I've had this open for ages to read out because I thought it was great. So Sam Barlow, I retweeted his tweet because I thought it was great. The the dude behind Immortality, which is a very adult game. <laughs> uh torn between finding the vulgarity of how world grows and being impressed that our medium allows such vulgarity to succeed at the highest level. I thought that was like the per- that that that's pretty much how I would say I feel about it. Um if especially in a world where this comes out and it's it's proven, which I think it will, um, that Definitely, there's like high levels of AI being used in this game. Um, I think that tweet would sum up perfectly how I will feel about the game. Yeah. I think it's interesting the use, like, how far are we going to regulate AI use in like games? So, well, we got, a, we got a release date for uh, Foam Stars, right? Okay. AI art and that. We, we know that. So, the, and Square Enix is doubling down. Square Enix has said that they're. they're but going AI has always AI, played so. a part in video games, you know? Yeah, it's the. Like, like you know, uh, we have entire worlds and stuff are completely generated. Like, there's definitely using a line. AI to create them. So, there's definitely a line. And it's no different than anything else I do. Like, so for example, I, I, use, I use some AI shit to do some <gasps> stuff that I find easy. Um, <laughs> But it's stuff like, and this maybe it, maybe it can be a personal preference, but it's like I don't mind tools that can have where I've got like a section of stuff, and I can just say, "Can you just reformat this like this, like just text?" You know. I mean, even we're recording now. I mean, we're using AI to remove like background noise. Yeah, so. true. Exactly. So like, there is a like I, I don't say AI as a whole is bad. I just as soon as everything we're talking about is AI art. Which is when like generative art stuff I do think is like even so Samsung did their event last week. I think it was last week or the week before, whenever yeah. they announced the S twenty fours. Um AI huge part of that. Some cool stuff and some stuff that I'm like dumb. So they're using AI that so when you're you call someone, and I think Pixels already do it anyway, but whatever. Um but they got like um you can now talk to someone and then um it'll like translate so you can bring like a spanish hotel and then like it'll translate it for them and then like transfer them back to you or you can like hold your phone out at someone and like translate the text backwards and forwards or whatever while you're talking and stuff like that then they've got like you can edit and they show and at least they do the one thing that i wish more people would do so you can edit a photo like it has someone like going to take a shot in a basketball hoop or some shit and they tell it to like take out the background or something like that and like completely changes the image, mm-hmm. like generative AI stuff like that. Um, it watermarks it though on theirs. I was like, okay, at least they're doing that. Like, the, yeah. you have no choice. Bottom left hand corner says generative AI. Crazy. Just this crop or, it though. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, I guess. Yeah. Save the image and then so, crop it a little bit. True. <laughs> so, I mean, it's something that we're not going to es- escape, and I think it's going to yep. be a continuing point. We of just got to fight out battles where we can. That's what. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I just think, yeah, I, like, I, I think it's just, for me personally, anything where it's like, well, that's someone's job, and, like, such a key part of video games is, like, art, obviously. Like, the second, like, that's taken away, I'm like, mm, don't know about that. <laughs> like, seems a bit sus. Like, I, 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 like, everyone kept saying, I had a guy when at work be like, I think it's man, also man. when you're outsourcing the AI. Like, yeah. if you built an in-house AI to, like, engine do art based on your designs that would be okay yeah well it's technically like, like if you make a water engine in a game and it but it reacts to the player it's like well there's ai involved in that yeah but when you get like when you go to like another ai source that you don't own i think that's kind of weird like yeah. they i think like they said for frame stars it's like they get went to mid journey and 
got them to generate a bunch of stuff to like fit within foam styles or whatever. So yeah, which that's weird. they that's weird because usually you would go to a concept artist and say, "I can you like here's the idea for our game? Can you draw?" But then what if art? it's the concept artist who decided to do that? Well, here's the problem. So Magic the Gathering, I don't know if you saw this while Worlds off. So Wizards of the Coast, their Twitter yes. account, they like tweeted out an image and then everyone was like, this is fucking AI. And they're like, no, it's not AI. We went through this shit. We fired someone who did AI for a Magic the Gathering card. We're not using AI anymore. Everyone stopped calling us out. That bullshit. We're not doing it anymore. We swear. And then people kept coming back and be like, the fucking clock hands fucked, you dickheads. Like, <laughs> like did you not realize it's fucked? And then they come back and they deleted the post and then they were like, oh, our bad. So apparently Wizards has now had to like fire two people like from social media mm. and an artist for the cards for for using generative AI tools to, to do stuff. And they had no yeah. idea, apparently. Apparently. So mm-hmm. fucking never ending world of AI. All right, uh, but quick shout outs to some stuff uh, that's to be posted up. So, uh, another, re- another review that posted up so far this year is the Cub review from Jacob. Gave it a 10 out of 10. That was what? the first year. It just comes flying out of the fucking gate. He's like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm using my one out of two <laughs> already in January. Fuck it. I'll go all out. Um, he said the card is releasing early in 2024, but starting year with a masterpiece and playing this has made me want to explore more games from developer Dem- Demagogue Studio. I think I said that right. I'm not sure. Um, this is the people that did the Golf Wasteland game and that other game that was on yeah. Netflix, um, which I can't remember the name of. But uh, what the fuck is that game called, actually? I can't find it. Um, it's one where you're on like a boat and explode. They're all set in the, all these games are set in the same world, so they just keep building it. It's got really great art. Um, apparently, it's only a few hours. I can't wait to play. I'm gonna play it hopefully as well. I really like the golf game. I really wanted to play high water. One. I think it's high water. One. That's it. That is it. So I've I never got around to it, but I always wanted to. Uh, JSX RGB docking station review by Jacob as well up on the website um, continues to review just about everything JSX JSAX JSAUX releases fuck me uh, gave that 9 out of 10 he said uh, the JSAUX RGB docking station is an awesome addition to my desktop desktop allowing me to quickly dock my portable devices like the Steam Deck iPad and laptop this setup enables me to utilize the large screen keyboard and mouse making them easy to use at home uh, I don't Look, I gotta be honest, he said this through. I was like, what the fuck is this? And I was looking at pictures of it and it's like sliding out and it's got like 18 different ports on it. I'm like, what the fuck? And then it lights up, it's all RGB. Anyway, um, read that for, for more information because if you're like me and you look at a picture, like if you look at the thumbnail on the website, it goes and it just says, like, what, like, the, what fuck? the fuck is that? <laughs> uh, read the review to, to find out more, I guess. Um, and then also, Best of 2023 stuff has all wrapped. If you haven't checked out that, it is all up now. Um, you've got the episodes of Arcade Couch. You've got all the top fives, top tens, all that sort of stuff. If you missed any of it, all on the website. Read it. Do the things. Um, mm-hmm. Enjoy. Right, because it's the start of year, I want to run down what's coming out for the rest of you quickly. Um, I went to find a good list. I went for a bunch of different websites. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to call out the ones, I'm not going to name ones that I told against, but I'm telling you, some of these places had terrible lists. I, and I didn't want all games. I didn't want all games. I just typed into Google. I was like, like bad taste or like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, uh, to, be, oh. to be honest, somewhat. Like there was a list where like three games in, I was like, these are all junk. Like, what are you talking about? Um, anyway, so I've ended up on this list. Top 50 most anticipated new games for 2024 by Polygon. I thought this was a, a, a solid little. Uh, list that ordered by the year so let's go for it i'm skipping the first one because that's already out uh this one is about to come out fuck it skip it i'll start at banishes so banishes ghost of new eden this comes out february 13th i can't wait this did get delayed from i don't know i think it was supposed to come out and uh, towards the end of late last year uh but of course it's from don't nod it's a game it's a action third person game in which you're playing like i don't know someone who like banishes ghosts and their partner wants to like escape and they're trapped or something i can't really remember anyway it's got true love at the center of it i think it looks really really cool uh i'd put that on my list if i 
I'm picking it up there. That's probably the next thing I'm looking forward to coming out. Um, yeah, because obviously Final Fantasy and everything's after that. So, vanishes Ghost of Mutant. Anyone else care for this? Go yeah, actually, yeah, oh, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm hoping it because it should be like maybe an eight to ten hour thing. So, like, that'll be, and it's Don't Not, you know, we we love Don't Not, don't we? Yeah, I think. No, it looks good. It looks good. Still it's like actually, it. actually plays well. Uh, Skull and Bones, you two are raring and ready to go, right? No. Let's kill some boats. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how much of that thing did you play? The I played trial? like a f- no. few hours. Yeah, yeah, and it ruined all your hopes and dreams. I mean, it's fine. Yeah. It's solid. And it I suspect it will find an audience of people who want to play that kind of a game, but I don't think it's not gonna be a massive it's not gonna be an Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh Mario vs. Donkey Kong, February sixteenth. Uh so this is a Game Boy game, Game Boy Advance game I never played. So I'll pick it up because the Nintendo Switch has basically become my platform of playing Nintendo games. I never played that released on other platforms and things, the games that also I did mm. like that they remade and then I play them again platform thing. Um, it's got co-op. I don't know. I'm hopefully that's not a huge part of it because I'm not going to play it co-op. I just want to play it by myself, but um, I'm keen to try this one out. Uh, is anyone keen to try out who hasn't played it before? Well, actually, here's a question. Did either of you play Brothers when that released? The Tale of Two Sons? No, I've never played it. Well, no. since, a hu- since you're such a huge fan of Game of the Award winning, whatever that game's called, Kieran. Um, it takes two. Well, it takes two. Are you going to play Brothers, The Tale of Two Sons, the remake, when it releases on February 28th? Probably not. Damn. Ash? I mean, I would be interested in trying it out. Obviously, like, I remember it being praised when it came out initially, So, but never got around to playing it. So I might own it somewhere, possibly. In, like, I think it was on PlayStation Plus, so you probably do. That's how I played it. I don't think I yeah. brought it. I think I just got it from PlayStation Plus. Um, it's a very cool game. So I, mean, I don't think it's that long either, to be honest. So um, mm. Obviously, the big difference between this, for people who don't know, um, you play as two characters, but you control them yourself. It takes two two characters, but you control them separately. So this one is you're yep. both. Yep. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, February 29th. Yes. What was that, Ash? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, I can't say what, but you're currently playing an RPG. Are you sure you're ready to yep. jump straight into another RPG? Sure. They're going to be different enough, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, feel like or you hope so if i'm i hope so and you know it's going to be a bit more action based you know final fantasy 7 remake Sorry. um maybe a little bit a larger world and that kind of mm. stuff um but yeah it's also been interesting to see the kind of the 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 reaction online these last few weeks like people getting really upset it's going to be more open world who were very upset that the first game was very linear you know it's kind of weird <laughs> Yeah, these two games. This game is going to be quite different to the first game in that regard. So, but yeah, obviously one of the going to be one of the biggest games of the year. Karen, you're diving into this on February. In yeah, February of course. Yeah. Do you finish 100%. the first one? Yeah, I can't remember. The, it's interesting. The struggle is going to be finding time to finish this one, whereas it was super easy in the, to finish the first one because we're in the middle of a pandemic and couldn't True. do anything else. Uh, True. So. <laughs> It also released early. I think it was that that thing where EB Games or whatever just were like, "Fuck it." Yeah, they're like, "Fuck, we, everything's going to shut down in like a week." Yeah. Let's just give this game to everybody who wants to come buy it. Because I think I remember at the time I um was like the Square Enix rep was like, "I yeah. give you a code on release day or whatever," and then like, it leaked, I, and I just went and got it. <laughs> 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 and I refl- like Ivan was like, "Well, like." Sucks we'll see embargo you. dates. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like do anything. Yeah. So I, I don't think that's going to happen this year, though. So, no, um, yeah, I'm very keen for this as well. Obviously, this will be one of the most played games of the year. It's going to be one of the biggest games of the year, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, especially coming off how different the ending of the first one was. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm just highly intrigued now that we get into this chapter. What we're doing? Like, what, what are we doing with this game? What, what, what is the point of this game? Where are we going? But by, by the end of this, will I have a better idea of what the third and final chapter will be? Hopefully, because <laughs> currently I'm like, I don't really understand. Like, what's the third one called? Like, uh, 
Re, re something. One's like retrograde. Oh no, the title. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, like because it was like Final Fantasy. Yeah, so remake, rebirth, re- rethink, rethink life, something like that. I feel like they named it. Um. Either way, that's that's the main thing because like we we're gonna get into this game. And where this game's picking up, it's like an hour or hour or so away around from like one of the most memorable gaming scenes of all time, obviously. And it doesn't seem like that's happening. And I'm just very confused <laughs> about how like the game progresses from that point is my is my main thing. Uh Alone in the Dark comes out March 20th. This got delayed quite a bit. Uh anyway, it's uh you got uh David Arbor and uh what's her name? Jody Comer running around. I think this looks pretty cool. It's a remake of the first one, but with like new actors, so and like pretty good actors. So I, I, I'm mm-hmm. I'm keen to find out more about this one. I'll say I, I'm a bit iffy on it. it. It definitely looks double A, which is fine. It's fine, but you know, ho- hopefully it could be good. Uh, then we got Dragons Dogman Two comes out March twenty twenty second. I, I I don't think any of us care about this, but I, I do want to point out that this game I think will be the week that this comes out. You'll see a bunch of people on your Twitter timelines and whatever the people who care about this franchise because there's like a very hardcore fan base. Uh, they they're going to be very happy. So just even if you're like, what the fuck is Dragons Dogma? There are people out there who have been yep. foaming for this game for years. So beware yeah. of them. I could that definitely one. feel the FOMO potentially hitting with this one. Like. How many massive RPGs do you want to play in one year, Ash? <laughs> I don't know. We haven't had like a bit traditional fantasy RPG in a while. Oh, shit. <laughs> you sure? Did you not just play yeah. Final Fantasy whatever last year? I don't think was that's that one was the one I hated? Oh, Final Fantasy. Yeah, nobody liked that one. We haven't played a good Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say a good. You just said traditional. <laughs> well, now, now I'm reiterating. Princess Peach so- yeah, Showtime comes out same day, March 22nd. So that's where I'll be. I'm ready. I'm like, I'm not ready for, I don't, I'm not after this bow and arrow bullshit on March 22nd. I'm after <laughs> P- Princess Peach's first solo primary antagonist adventure, protagonist mm. even. Um, very keen for this. Obviously, it looks very good. Different costumes, different mechanics, and whatever else that are, are taking part in this. Very cool. Um, Whedon, don't care. Braid Anniversary Edition, don't really care. Destiny 2, The Final Shape, do we care about this, Kira? Um, uh, no, I don't know. I think there's a lot of, I don't want to say bad blood with Destiny and Bungie at the minute, but, um, meh, I, I'm not, at the minute I'm not hyped, but I'm sure if it looks better when it goes, when it approaches, then. I think it's got the potential to be one of the most important releases of the year, like, because if it fails, like, they could potentially change everything over at Bungie, whereas if it succeeds, obviously things could be going in a more positive direction, so. Is this so? Is it called the final shape because it's actually like it's the final? It's the DLC last one. It's the last one. It's supposed to be the last one of Destiny Two. Really? Mm-hmm. I thought they said they were doing it Destiny Two for like ten years though. Well, I think it, I don't know if it's the last one of Destiny Two or the last one of like this current storyline that's of been like going the, since Destiny uh, initially. Lightfall arc. <laughs> I don't know. Like no, no, no. It's like since like the start of like. So it's the start of Destiny 2 even. Like oh, okay. Yeah, like this is the end of this ongoing story of what they're building to, what they've been building to. Like this is the end game of their Destiny franchise. Universe. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh Black Myth Wukong, August 20th. Uh I used to care about this and then found out the developers are a bunch of losers, apparently, so I now no longer care. Um <laughs> is where I fall on that. Um Developers, uh, a, a quick story for that, just because you're like, what are you talking about, Dylan? Uh, developers apparently all hate women, I guess is the, the short story. I think, right? You've seen it, haven't you, Ash? The, te- the Discord stuff? Yeah, I think yeah. that's, that's uh, accurate. <laughs> they're, they, they're misogynistic and homophobic, I think is the, the rundown of, from what, what has been released. So game looked cool till then, but anyway. Uh, Angerfoot. Who played this at PAX? Yes. Yes. I did. You've got angry feet. Are you looking forward to this? It's about, uh, yeah, I'd be keen to give it a go. Uh, you know, kind of simplistic, like a first-person uh, hotline first Miami, person I guess. Kicker. 
Yeah, but you also kick people because yeah. you're trying it's, to find your shoe. Really? Is that the plot? I'm pretty sure from memory, someone stole your shoe and now you're going to hunt them down yeah, fair to enough. reclaim it. Yeah. Um, it's going to be an interesting year of first person stuff. So you're going to have first person game where you're kicking people, first person game where you're whipping people. Like, you know, guns are out. Um, and in these games. True. Uh, Animal Well. Uh, the, this is the game that, uh, what's his name? Donkey. Yeah, here it is. Donkey. Uh, from his, for anyone who watches Donkey on YouTube, this is like his studio or publisher. I can't remember. It says here somewhere, I'm sure. Blah, 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 blah. It'll be the first game from first game from new indie publisher Big Mode, which video game shit poster and YouTuber Donkey founded 2022. Um, the game looks really, really good, though. It's a Metroidvania. Lots of cool arts and stuff. Uh, all right, History Untold, we don't care. Arc 2, does anyone care about playing as Vin Diesel or talking to Vin Diesel? I don't understand how these games work. No. <laughs> I don't understand. Are you playing as Vin Diesel or do you just, is Vin Diesel in it? Nobody is an NPC. They've barely shown anything of this game. Avowed, we talked about baby steps. Fuck yeah. Let's get a release date for this Looks shit. It's funny. This is yes. going to be one of the most streamed games of the year. I guarantee it. Yeah. Mean potential already all, uh, is already all over this. So very, very keen for this. Um, Banditale, League of Legends story. I'm very keen for that. Um, it's very cute. You're in a little city. Talk to characters. League of Legends, yeah. We're going to have... Multiple League of Legends stuff happened this year. Blade Chimera, I don't care about. Blue Protocol, I don't even know what that is. The casting of Frank Stone. Stone? What the fuck is this? It's Horror the Dead by Daylight game. story. Oh! Oh, that's right. The one with the... The, the, the mine shaft with the guy shafting. The guy with the yeah. welding mask. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah, actually, no, I do care about that. That was a cool trailer. Anyway. Cat Quest 3. Apparently, they keep making these. They all look the same. Um, it's the pirate one. Yeah. Yeah, Pyro on Tree. Good point. Uh Corko Book Death God, but a bit of Dust Dustborn. What's Dustborn? Do I know that? No, anyway. Earth Defense Force, don't care. Elden Ring Shadow of Earth Tree. DLC for Elden Ring's coming out uh, this year, apparently. I might open my, my game then. Maybe. Maybe the DLC is the time. Nah, I've got to buy another I'll... copy. <laughs> I'll buy I'll buy the uh I'll buy the digital deluxe edition that comes with the DLC. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good, I'll get I'll get around it that way. Um, Foam Stars. Are we actually playing this or what? I think we give it a go. You're going to give it a go? Seeing as it's coming to PS Plus. Fucking Buddy Watson. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck is this? Funko Fusion. You can... Polygon writes, you can think of multiplayer adventure game Funko Fusion as night at the museum for Funko Pop figures. You know what? I actually, if they make, if they can make a Funko game that's sort of like a Lego game, Maybe I'm down. Uh, Hades 2. Won't it be a bit close to Lego games? Couldn't there be some kind of, like, you know, stealing from it? I mean, there's no bricks involved, so I think it's a completely different property, probably. Yeah, I need the heads. Would unless, they, unless they put, like, bricks involved, yeah. And little hands Maybe. that can only clip. It know. depends if they actually voice acted or not, or they just go, or it's um, played out like si- silent... Uh, Silent, Silent bits, toys. yeah. Silent bits, yeah. Then it'd be then it then it's definitely t- too close to it. Uh, Hades two, we all super keen. Yeah, should be very. Good. Yes, I don't think I'm going to jump in on the early access though. Not even a little bit. No, I won't either. I'm just going to wait for no. the full release. I will, I will wait. So well, it's why... a fine product. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. like because obviously I think, I, because I feel like. The story was the key draw for me for Hades. Yeah. I mean, the combat was fantastic as well, but uh, yeah, it was very much the story that I was yeah. invested in. So I get you. I'm going to do exactly what it. I did. I'll do exactly what I did to the first Hades, which is I'll, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll play this for a couple of hours, come on this podcast, talk about it for, for a segment, mm-hmm. and not touch it again and for a about year. <laughs> that's, that's all I'll do. And I'll, I'll go, well, I supported them. Put my, you know. Mm. Put my money down. Hyperlight Breaker. Uh, this is the sequel to Hyperlight Drifter or whatever, which I haven't played. Um, John Carpenter's toxic fucking shoots game. Thing. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the game. I can't believe this is a real game. Fucking wild. This game's going to come out and die three weeks later. Kingdom Hearts Missing Link. Nope, don't care. Uh, Lightyear Frontier. 
Yeah, but it's a fucking mobile game where apparently they're doing a lot of... No, just to be clear, in case people are like, what? A Kingdom Hearts game coming out this year? Yeah, no, it's a fucking mobile game. But it's, it's a mobile game that's apparently going to be important, but it just pisses me off. Uh, <laughs> Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, I'll be playing that. Again, continuing my let's just play Nintendo Switch is games for things that didn't play. Uh, Metaphor, I still don't understand how we say the name of this game. Refantas, Refantas, Refantasio. Tazio, yeah. Dumb name. People that made Persona are making it. Director of Persona 3, 4, and 5. Are we all playing this? Yep. Yeah. Ash, so far, I've gathered you are playing nothing this year <laughs> other than fucking massive RPGs. <laughs> you have not said yes to a game that is not a massive RPG. I, I have. Anger Feed. Oh, wait, that's a massive RPG. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe it is. I don't know. Multiverse is on this list, apparently. Oh, yeah, because it's coming back, I guess. It's going to come back, maybe. Come back. Uh, Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door. I'll be playing that. Are you playing that, Ash? It's another uh, RPG for you. Okay. Yeah. All right, there's a look at the, the big games coming out this year. Where was Suicide Squad on this? <laughs> he, yeah, well, I was is that, about... Is that, what, is that what happened? The first list you saw had Suicide Squad on it. You're like, no, it did this, actually this is trash. Have, a few had Suicide Squad on it, and I did Well, go. obviously, I think it just skips whatever was early because there's no Infinite Wealth. There's no um, Prince of Persia. Like, yeah. obviously, they're just, yeah. We're from, like, February. Yeah. Uh, January early. 19th, apparently. Yeah. They just decided uh, those well, games don't count. We're all uh, excited students. for Yakuza. Like a dragon, you mean? Like mm-hmm. a dragon, incident wealth. I'm sorry, my bad. Yes, we're all excited for that. Um, what was the other thing you just said? Um, that was going to, uh, Prince of Persia. It's the other Prince thing. of Persia. Yes. Um, Ash, you missed out on because you jumped in Riders with Fishing. Are you gonna play that or what? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully a whole time. Somewhere between, between all these massive hundred RPGs, hours yeah. massive RPGs that you're suddenly <laughs> playing apparently. Um, and then what was the other thing? Uh, still, who's playing Still Side Squad? Cool. I'll wait and see. Uh, you know. <laughs> Not a chance. Not even five minutes. It, if there's okay. enough of a good story there, then I will give it a... I'll power through. No, it, but. Ashley, this is what you do, right? And I'm okay with saying it for that game. Wait until all the cutscenes are on fucking YouTube in 4K. And they'll be up at release. <laughs> so day someone, one. Someone will have a review code and uh, they just make that. Fire and ice. So, I think it yeah, is. That one. That one. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just watch the watch it as a movie. You'll be better off. Did you see um what's that popular dude that streamed it the other day? Um I don't know. Anyway, Kieran would know it if I could give him better clues. Anyway, some popular YouTuber streamed <laughs> it the other day, right? Um got like a early access exclusive stream of uh of the game. I flicked through it. It does not look good. It just doesn't look good. It doesn't doesn't look fun at all. And to put even more um salt on the wounds of it, then you had old mate, the two heads from Rocksteady announced their new studio like two days ago you know yeah, interesting did you did you, you didn't say that no yeah so the, the two main dudes from rock City, they like started another studio i'm like why would you announce it so close like <laughs> like have they done that on purpose i i find it hard to believe they didn't so just saying could you find it did you find the dude's name no nah, i can find who's done it suicide squad stream exclusive maybe i don't know no it's just taking me to the fucking movie suicide squad game stream dr lupo oh lupo really dr lupo got a a, a big old exclusive on the on the, the suicide squad all right anything else? oh actually no you weren't here so i want to ask you what what before we wrap up i'll ask you what we went over what, what what have you been playing? What have you been playing on the whole day? Redacted. Yeah, other than Redacted. Nothing? That was pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. That and writing all this best of 2023 stuff. It's... Yeah, well, if you, when you leave it 20 minutes before they post, like, I understand how that keeps you busy. Sometimes I would check the post and be like, this shit goes up in an hour. I assume Ash has the day off and he's just waiting to the last second before the top five posts and just fucking get in there and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get fucking my kick hell. somehow. You know. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Despicable. 
All right. Thank you for joining us this week on the first episode of Arcade Couch for 2024. Let us know what you've been playing on the Discord, on the X. Uh, I don't know whatever platforms exist. Who knows what platforms will exist later in this year? The whole world could change this year. Big things, I, I think, are coming. God, yeah. I hope so. It's a Trump year. So it's only, it's only, it's only this could be year. the last year of civilization. So. Yeah, it's true. I mean, based on the, the weather map I saw before, Australia could catch on fire and blow up. So, you know, like, seems like half the country's on fire. I, I see a weather map, everywhere's on fire, uh, or, or looks like the whole country's on fire, and then Tassie's down here, and it's like, yeah, they're, they're still okay. I'm like, uh, yeah. Okay. It's fine. We're about to get hit by a cyclone, so don't put all the fires out. Yeah, well, you know, got to put them out before they can flood you, or <laughs> whatever the fuck else happens <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, thank you for joining us. Uh, yeah, so explosionnow.com slash Discord, takes you to our Discord, explosionnow.com slash Twitter, takes you to our Twitter page or X page, what the fuck it's called. And uh, yeah, let's know all the things over there. And we'll see you here, same time, same channel, next week, back to our regularly scheduled <gasps> postings. We're back at it like We're a back. rash. <laughs>